Welcome to Wise Up On Air. Thanks for joining us today. I hope everyone's doing well out there in the world. Uh, it's wild times and I'm glad to be here today. We've got some special guests coming up. We're gonna to talk to a couple of the developers behind Tunche, responsible for sound and music. And first, I just wanna kind of bring it down right to where I am and tell you about uh, what's exciting for me. Uh, I talk a lot here on Wise Up On Air at the beginning about what's happening at Audio Kinetic. Uh, as you may have known if you've tuned in in the past, you know, covering uh, what's new and exciting at the company and what we're up to. And there's an intersection in my role as product manager here at Audio Kinetic um, that is a, it's a very special moment in time. Uh, we're preparing for the launch of the WISE 22.1 beta. That'll be coming up soon. This is uh, our next full release that uh, we've been working on uh, to really bring some cool new aspects of interactive audio development to the community here. And uh, just inspiring part of that work that I'm doing uh, with the development team at Audio Kinetic is talking to developers out there and people using WISE uh, almost every day about their experience. And in collaboration with teams and folks out there using WISE, helping to bring that back to the development team and really grow these next versions of WISE uh, in the direction of people using it. So. I'm really excited because we're prepping for that beta and you'll hear more about that. Keep them tuned. Um, so that's one cool piece of it. Uh, another side of this that has been really inspiring lately is having developers bringing forward uh, their first explorations with the object-based audio pipeline that we released in 21.1. Uh, if you've had your hands, your eyes, your ears on that, uh, you know that we... Uh, landed a new pipeline that allows you to audition object-based audio and start working with it in your projects uh, and in your environment to really hear what this new technology brings. And I saw a project this week that just is blowing my mind with the level of detail and creativity that uh, that is possible with it. And I can't wait to talk more and bring more information about that project to you in the future. But it's a great moment to have these tools available for people. And I hope that you're reaching out and trying these new things uh, as we continue to you know, evolve the language of interactive audio with WISE. So, and the, the, the last piece on that is this educational piece. Uh, there's always something new in our industry. We're working in uh, game development and interactive experiences, and, and it requires a kind of constant thirst and knowledge for that. And so uh, our educational materials continue to evolve, uh, and, and we're involved with the community of people who are you know, taking our certifications and digesting the materials that we have available across our sample projects and continuing to learn from them what the missing pieces are, what the gaps are. And we hope that at the, at the bottom of it all, uh, we have a group of wise users who are willing to bring that feedback back to us uh, through various channels that we have and that we make available to you. This is just me. This is my role uh, sitting between the community and the development teams at Audio Kinetic uh, growing these next versions of WISE and continuing to evolve uh, features and workflows that people are using today. So it's just an exciting time and I wanted to share that with folks. And speaking of education, I'm just gonna roll you an entire video from a woman named Angela Geis. She's put together this great demo of um, 
of her implementation of an interactive music system. It's a couple minutes long. Uh, usually don't pause to take the time, but I was really struck by uh, the clarity of communication in this video. And thank you, Angela, for permission to uh, present this to the community here on Wise Up On Air. And stick around because we've got uh, special guests lined up to talk interactive music and dynamic music and sound in the game Tunche. I'm going to go over how I designed the interactive music and why is implementation for our Picfrew based Unity game. Here's a miniature snapshot of the final game, built to be easily expanded upon. Each item the player chooses changes a layer of the music. This version currently has two half phrases, four bars each. These changes are controlled through switches and RTPCs. On the lower bar, the dancing of the section icons are controlled via callbacks. Starting in the Game Syncs tab, we have our switches and game parameters. There is only one parameter for each section. The minimum is always zero, and the maximum can be changed on how many sections you want. Each parameter is linked to its corresponding switch group. Each group has as many switches as there are item choices. For example, here we have three closed choices, with zero being the default nothing. Within each section of music, instrument subtract layers are controlled by the switch groups and the real-time parameter controls. Callbacks are mainly controlled through the Unity side. I used the Rhythm Manager script from this WISE tutorial and modified it to fit. I put it on each item that will move, and this script is what makes the icons dance. The Rhythm Event Manager grabs all the children in the lower bar parent object and starts the Rhythm Manager scripts all at one time. When the scene is first loaded, the AK event script on the main camera calls the function in the Rhythm Event Manager to start the dance with the callback flag music sync beat, sending information about each beat and making sure that none of the icons are slacking. Each time the music playlist container changes for each mini phrase, I use another script to post the event music section one or two. For each event, I send three input parameters. The first is the game object to call the event on. The second is the callback flag that you want. And the third is the function that WISE will call when it comes back to Unity. Here, I am sending each synced beat to the main camera game object and calling the callback function down here, which in turn starts the action of the rhythm manager. And that is how the Picru project is set up. And that is inspiring to me in so many ways. Uh, thanks again to Angela for letting me present that here on Wise Up On Air. Uh, you know, this is a very uh, beautiful illustration of dynamic music. Uh, and it's not just the, the playback of a music system uh, across different layers, but the way that she went and brought that back to the game uh, in reaction to you know the the pulsing buttons in this very um, you know UI centric type of experience, uh, it just adds that beautiful connection and and helps to cross the two way street between audio and the game, and then the game back to audio. So just an elegant execution of something, and and really we're in a golden age of being able to tie these things together in a way that supports whatever the experience is that you're building. So uh, I just got, I just get super jazzed about seeing stuff like that coming from the community uh, meant to help 
other people understand the, the complexities or the sometimes complexities that we face in, in game audio. Uh, so yeah, I'm glad to be here to be able to share those things from the community. So thanks again, Angela Geis, for your help and for your great video. Uh, so with that, I want to welcome to Wise Up On Air, Antonio Giovanni. Welcome. Hey, hey everyone. Great to have How you. How are you guys doing? Thanks for being here for this. It's a pleasure to have you here. And I can't wait to pick the discussion back up. Uh, these Wise Up On Airs are, are crazy for me because I'm always so excited to hear about what folks are working on. And, um, and so we run away in our preview meetings, right? We, uh, we get deep right out of the gate because we all speak the same language of interactive sound. So uh, great to have you here today. Introduce yourselves for the, um, for the audience here. Antonio, would you like to start? Sure. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. It's a super pleasure to be here. You know, uh, it's great to have you, Damien, like taking care of all of this community side in terms of like developing the, you know, expanding the knowledge regarding the, the interactive audio. This is such an important subject for our industry. So it's an honor to be here, um, you know, a place where you guys talk to so many of our heroes and people that, you know, like we, uh, listen and have as a reference. So uh, yeah, my name is Antonio Teoli. I am a, a game composer. I'm the founder of a company called Andromeda Sound, um, which is a company focused on creating a, a sound production for video games, you know, music, sound design, implementation, uh, also animations and, and pretty much all kind of media. Um, I've been working in the industry for uh, pretty much 20 years. I started professionally when I was 16. Believe it or not, I got very started very, very early in my career in Brazil, where I'm from. Um, and yeah, it's, a, it's an honor to be here and uh, very happy and very excited to, to be talking to you guys a little bit about um, you know, our, our work on, on Tunche. Great. We've already got some shout outs in the chat propping up Tunche and, uh, and giving a holler. So uh, great to have you here with us today, Antonio. Thanks. I, uh, again, it's great to, uh, to hear about, you know, starting early, you had that idea like sound and music and, and um, it's, always, it's always great for someone to arrive in their career and, and have realized that kind of dream and vision, right? It was just difficult to convince my parents about what I wanted to do. That was a problem for sure. Yeah, I got I got this problem also. Yeah. Ah, yes. So Giovanni, yeah. take the floor. <laughs> Tell us about. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Giovanni Webster, um, Brazilian audio designer with around 12 years experience in game audio and other media, um, film, animation, advertising. Uh, music market. Um, today, I'm a senior audio designer at Splash Damage UK in London. Um, currently working on two incredible projects, but unfortunately, I can't talk about them. Um, in the past, um, I provided some some courses involving game audio for quite some time now. Um, I was also a instructor in, in in mixing courses for DJs and the use of software for digital DJing. In 2014, um, I was hired by Achilles Game Studio, one of the biggest game studios in Brazil. Um, there, I made an online first-person shooter called Ballistic Overkill, um, Horizon Chase Turbo, an arcade racing game, Looney Tunes World of Mayhem, a free-to-play RPG game with Scopely and Warner Brothers and Wonderbox for Apple Arcade. So that's a um, lot of platforms then, there. Yeah, yeah. So you have the, that experience. PC, PC console, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, a little bit of, of each of one of them. Um, and then after we met several years ago at, at gaming events around the country, 
uh, Antonio invited me to work with him. Uh, I think about three years ago. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah, and, and, and last year before I came to London, uh, we embraced this challenge of, of Tunche. Nice. And it was amazing, yeah. Nice. Thanks for that introduction. Again, like such a depth of experience uh, that you communicated there, and that must have uh, helped uh, land this Tunche project, which was initially a Kickstarter um, and... I don't know. Talk talk a little bit about how you arrived to the project. Maybe give us some background on Tunche and what it is. Uh, I know we'll see a little bit of gameplay here in a minute, but um, set that up. How did how did you arrive at the project? So um, when I moved here to Los Angeles three years ago, three years and a half, I've met this amazing sound designer called uh, Sebastian Apolinario. And he's the sound designer of the game. He's Tunche. in the chat. He this... Yeah. Oh, hey, Sebastian. Yeah. Excellent. We've been talking about it. He is all. He's not just a great sound designer, but he's also a great cooking cooker chef. Oh, excellent. Cooking chef. Yeah. yeah excellent. So yeah, we've been talking about eating. He's gonna prepare some special Peruvian chicken, which I am very curious to to, to have it. And uh, so Sebastian and I became very, very, very uh, close friends. And um, we last year he he talked to me about this Peruvian game. You know, that was like a hack and slash. That was like look uh, was about like uh, this this characters in the at rainforest. Uh, so they were uh, trying to do a very specific work in terms of music implementation because on their Kickstarter. Uh, uh, one of their, their promise on the Kickstarter was basically creating uh, this very uh, dynamic music system. And they were trying some approaches, it wasn't working. So he talked to me and then he connected me to uh, Luis Wong, which is the CEO of the company, and Francisco, which is the, uh, I think his position is a tech director, but he was also was responsible for over overseeing the music production as well, because I think he has his feet on both sides uh so we talked and i saw that the project was uh, uh a little complex and uh my knowledge uh on creating the dynamic music system is, it's fine it's good but on the technical side i always rely to have uh someone else which in this case is uh, giovanni because he's like the the technical guy to help me uh, on this, uh, not to mention he's an amazing sound designer as well, of course. And uh, and then like we, we talked about this project and the, the meetings started and then that's how we, we landed the gig. It was a, a very cool, uh, very cool and collaborative uh, process, you know, be between uh, not just Giovanni and me, but also between the guys from, um, from Leap Gaming Studio. It was a very, very, very cool process. Awesome. That's great. Well, and before we dig into some of the challenges that you faced on the music side of things, let's give folks a peek at uh, some of this gameplay, sound, and music design. Sound good? Cool. Uh, so what do we have here? Let's launch this gameplay. Yeah, so this is hack and slash for sure, right? Totally. And this is a multiplayer game too, right? Up to four yeah, friends? It's co -op. <laughs> yeah, co op with four players. Yeah. One of the one of the best definitions of the game, uh, like from the from PC gamer, uh, they they say, well, I was drawn to Tunchi by its unique, refreshing art. It was the combat that really set it. So, yeah, the combat is, is very satisfying. Yeah. And so let's let's pause it there and dig a little bit more into what you had to do to bring the sound and music of this like rich world uh, into focus 
uh, in collaboration with the developers. Do you want to start, Giovanni? Do you want to go, or I can do it? Um, I think I think you have better. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> you can start better. <laughs> so, so I, it's important to mention that the sound design implementation and creation was handled by Sebastian Apolinari. We did not touch the sound design. He was he was already dealing with that. Uh, we the, the the music on our side was basically, um, you know, when you jumped in the in the project, we got uh we received uh, giovanni can correct me if i'm wrong because it's been like more than a year and my memory <laughs> sucks but it's basically i think it was giovanni we're talking about five boss songs and four word songs yeah yeah that was we, it right yeah in total we have um 11 music in the game oh, so it was 11 uh, it was a nine i don't remember yeah but but nine of them are dynamic dynamic okay yeah. yeah. What does dynamic mean in this case? We, uh, uh, we um, yeah, I mean dynamic because um, they they can change based on um, what is happening in the game, and they have um, different uh, layers, different instruments that uh, goes on and off. You know, in different, based on different levels, based on different worlds. So, uh, the game has uh, different, uh, very, uh, you know, long uh, uh, levels and different levels. Yeah. And uh, dynamic means they can change uh, between two two basic states. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one state you are exploring, and and in the other state you are in combat. Yeah with enemies and uh based on that we change the instruments of of the music uh, based on what's happening on the screen great and i know this was part of the initial kickstarter uh package right was to empower yeah. this level of dynamism and yeah yeah so so so, so the guys at tunche they are uh i i i would say especially Francisco, they are very passionate about uh, the music, the, the dynamic music in, in, in the video games. And, and um, part of their, uh, you know, um, I would say the word promises or part of their plan was to have this uh, dynamic uh, music system in, in the game. And they had a, a lot of ideas and we try to accomplish as much as we can that was possible on the technical side. And because... Um, like before we jumped into this call, Giovanni and I we were talking and we were refreshing a little bit about the project. And we remember, for example, that the the dynamic music system for the bosses, yeah, they were completely different than the dynamic music system for the for the world music, right? So the dynamic system for the boss was basically a horizontal uh, layering process, while in the world was more like a vertical uh, layering process. Uh, which is it's not a very very, very complex. Um, I think the the technical side and the technical challenge, to be more more specific, was actually just the amazing music that uh, this composer called uh, Jose Varon composed, and make sure it could uh, work on the way that the especially Francisco was uh, envisioning for 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 the project and. Um, so yeah, so basically kind of your, we that's kind of where your role came in because you were able to take the composer's music and that is yeah. that where your process started then? Yeah, my process was pretty much getting the audio files and uh create this project, which I can show to you on, on my, my, my Cubase section here. But it was pretty much like uh getting these audio files uh, do like a, a, a little bit of mixing and rebalancing that in a way that could work to the stems that we were printing out, that I was bring, printing out to Saint Giovanni, so he could do the the technical implementation. That for the for specifically for the word uh, music in, in this particular case. So it was um, very challenging because uh, originally they, they wanted to have all the tracks. Uh, the, to be dynamic in in, in the game, but uh, there were tracks, there were music that was like forty plus yeah. tracks. That would be insanely a lot. Um, so 
the first thing was basically for me creating this this big Cubase project and distribute the the tracks. I can I can share my screen if you want. Great. Let, let me yeah. Let me do that. Um, cool. Uh, and so let, and what I'm sorry, go on. What I'm really excited about here is that the developer you know included dynamic and interactive music as part of their their pitch essentially to the the community and and involved a composer who was able to you know bring the world and the environments to life and then connecting the dots between that and and the dynamic systems that Giovanni was designing in conjunction with the game uh, you know this is a this is a story with a very happy ending of course uh, <laughs> But let's let's jump back into this uh, this beginning process where you've received the music from the composer, and now you're yeah. you're working with Giovanni to define systems and pres uh, mix and yeah, tell us about that. Yes, yeah. so, yeah. So basically, as you can see here, uh, and uh, you have like basically these are the word tracks. So we have like a, you know uh, like this is one word music and this is another word music and so yep. on and so on. So basically four word tracks. So the first challenge for me was basically separate these uh, audio tracks that I got received as an instrument track. So we had like acoustic guitar lead, uh, you know, xylophones, whatever, yeah. and try to do a first division based on um, and more overall instrumentation, you know, like plucks, that that kind of stuff. Yep. Uh, you know, wings and synthesizers. Uh, there was also like um, some back and forth in terms of direction from Francisco. Like he was very uh, active, giving us uh, directions, and he was like, "This instrument, specifically this one, is part of the downtime." That, that that and that one's the like the synthesizer is part of the down, down downtime and that's part of the combat. So there was like a little bit of management there in terms of track. Then once we figure out like where it would go where in terms of like tracks, then I create these stems and and that's pretty much like where I was printing everything. And as, as you can see, there there is still a lot of stems here. Sure. To to send to send to uh, to why. So that was the very first. Uh, Sorry, the, the second attempt. The first one was like, of course, trying all the tracks, yeah. which w we knew it wouldn't be possible on the technical side. The second uh, attempt was basically doing a reduction through stems. Yeah. And uh, and then we went from there, like uh, doing reductions and reductions and reductions and up to the moment where we found, uh, okay, that's the limit. Yeah. We, you know, <laughs> that's what can be handled. And, and, and that's and also what make sense in terms of what you guys promised. So it was like a balance between making sure the creative side and their creative vision, which was very clear, could fit what technical uh, was actually possible in terms of like, you know, memory and width and size and and, 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 and yeah. channels and everything else. Yeah, but yeah. Then I, I, I and I love it because, uh, it, oh, go ahead, Jamie. Yeah. No, uh, I was I was going to, to add some notes. Uh, there were There were some tracks that they sent almost 60 layers. So, you know, playing 60 layers for the soundtrack, uh, sound effects for four players at the same time, voiceovers, ambience, you know, it's it's a lot of things playing at the same time. And um, also it's important to mention that there were several instruments that uh, Antonio mentioned that instruments from downtime state and uh, combat state um, that the developers told us the importance of them because they were Peruvian instruments. Yes. You know, and they need to stand out on the mix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that's true. And so you're, you're bridging this intersection where the developer has a vision. They, their, their dream is highly dynamic music, um, you know, in tune with what's happening on screen uh, and the gameplay, uh, and and you're starting from you know so many tracks uh, that um, that you know you need to make decisions about, and some of those decisions you know will will limit the ability of 
what is promised dynamically because as you render the stems for the the winds or the wind section uh, you know that you can't push up an individual instrument anymore and so you're making making those decisions both from a creative and technical perspective and it sounds like you were right at that intersection between uh, the composer and the developer um, yeah. you know helping helping yeah, them bridge that gap yeah exactly and and as as i said before like uh, francisco he had a very clear vision and he knew exactly as giovanni said as well he knew what instruments in particular had an important function based on on, on his vision and, and louis vision for the game so he was really uh, there was a lot of back and forth uh, in terms of like, okay, this is the first separation suggestion. No, this is, did, doesn't work because I want this instrument to stand out. But then we were like passing the technical limit. So I was like, okay, let me just try to reprint this new configuration. So it was like a little bit of a, a, a trying and error until we got to a configuration that was uh, pleasant and making sense for them in terms of like stems and 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 yeah it was it was very 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 like lots of back and forth yeah. with, with them and it, but it was great honestly like it, it was cool to work with them because they had this that's what i love about working with uh indies i worked in huge projects as well before uh but the, the indies sometimes they have like this passion yeah about like that's my baby especially because like it's not like a, a a game that was like 300 folks working on where you just do like a one little detail in the game they basically like we in the world everyone's wearing many hats right yeah. so everyone gets very passionate like like a baby thing and uh and it's cool <laughs> because it's you can really handcraft and really fine-tune the way as those uh like, like Luis and Francisco those like amazing guys uh, you know like the way they envision and and also promise to the to their audience and especially for me and, and Giovanni because we are from Brazil we are South American and especially because it was like dealing with the rainforest for us was a very special project so oh, we really put great. our our passion on it as well because it was I I, I honest love it's like oh yeah that's so cool finally a game dealing about like a, a South American or like yeah, a urban uh, culture Amazon. so cool Amazon folklore, you know, yeah, uh, it's it's important for for us yeah. and, and them because it's part of of Peru and Brazil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is a special game, and and I I identify so much with that passion that you're talking about. Uh, a developer with a vision can bring to it, and a, and they they s selected Francis Francisco to to compose for it. And I'm getting the impression that he might not have had a lot of game audio experience in the past. I, I, th I think uh, Jose, Jose is the composer, ah, but Francisco, yeah, oh, yeah, Francisco was the, the technical director and he had uh, also had a step on, a, on, on, the, yeah. on the music decision from the creative yeah. pers uh, point of view and also from the technical uh, point of view as well yeah but from jose so you it, would get uh, you know a lot of tracks and i think in a lot of in games we have an understanding that there are resource limitations but what i love is that jose was able to you know compose without the kind of restrictions yeah uh and so well which is where your job started was taking the 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 blue sky vision for the soundtrack and then yeah. And then collaborating on those decisions to bring it to runtime interactively in Tunche. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. Like, uh, when, when we got the tracks, it was clear that uh, Jose did an amazing job yeah. on, on the music composing side. But there was like uh, some uh, little, little uh, complications in terms of the dynamic approach because sure. we know like when when you're composing for a game that we know how it's going to be in terms of like dynamic system let's 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 just use the term dynamic 
we need to kind of like orient our our focus to a very specific direction in the way the music structure will be at, at least a little bit there is a, a little some little subtle differences that that's let's say that so i think that was a big the biggest challenge uh there were like in, instruments where because again like jose did this uh, so so much has so much attention to details there were like a, a one track it was just like one specific peruvian uh percussion that played in one moment like bling, in one moment yeah. so i was like oh my god this needs to go somewhere it doesn't make any sense to be alone here because it just plays on one time but that's jose being very careful and, and deta detailed on the music composing side and on my side i was like okay how can we preserve this attention to details from the composer side and try to adjust these on a on a, on a dynamic way so that was the, uh, at least from my side because i know giovanni will talk about his side and i feel like he had all other challenges and from my side it was basically like that was preserving the, the the creative aspect to it at the same time we could make sure it would run on the technical side nice yeah in the end uh, um in the end a good balance was found between you know f keeping the details that jose composed and uh, making groups for us uh, to better work in our technical side inside wise yeah and now you had to bridge platforms from switch all the way up to pc and and other platforms as well so it had to scale across those yeah. different requirements right uh, i'll be interested yeah. to hear if you had to make many accommodations for that as well um, but maybe let's uh, you want to dig into the wise side of things? Do you want to spin some more gameplay? What uh, what should we do next? Um, Jovan, if you want to show the session and uh, to them for the for for the word, because again, like the word the word music system was basically a layering system, and the boss was uh, horizontal uh, slicing. So we have uh, two different situations here, which again, very very cool approach from. Uh, from the guys from from Tusha to have two like a different system based on like two completely different uh, situations, very 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 cool to have that and um, yeah, Giovanni, it's it's on you, man. Yeah, yeah. we got this going. Um, so yeah, um, you've we are talking about. Uh, let me just hear. Yeah, you're talking about. Uh, Here's our structure. Um, we have the boss music, and every boss music we have some uh, different uh, faces. Yeah, phases so of the it. The boss. Yeah, yeah the uh, the boss is not uh, vertical, as Antonio mentioned. It. Uh, so we work uh, with with loops and uh, for for each face, but they have transitions. Yeah. So yeah, so we we use a uh, transition. So I have phase one to phase two, phase two to phase three, intro two to phase one, and um, and this kind of implementation are... makes total sense from the like intensity of the boss fight is like it's not a dynamic thing. Like when you're in the boss fight, you're in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're in it, and and he's the center of attention. Yeah. He, he, you you just need to worry about the boss. Yeah. So the music uh, doesn't need to have that detail that, you know, oh, oh no, you are exploring. We can <laughs> go light. We can play the downtime. No, it's it's not here. Yeah. Uh, so the boss is straight away. And um, we have these different phases. They And they use transitions between them. Um, so, yeah. And these uh, are inside the folder boss music. So... And here we have the world music. Great. And this was so a there totally four... different approach. Yeah. 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 Totally. Totally. We have four different worlds: cave world, jungle world, magic world, and river world. Um, opening cave here, uh, we call room each level. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me s let me show here cave room one. Uh, we have three segments. Uh, so the music uh, in, in the begin what uh, talking about the process the workflow yeah. i got the whole music and 
put it on a, a music container. Yep. And um, we work it on segments mm -hmm. to divide the music in different segments. Mm -hmm. And as the music works uh, alone, I mean, uh, it's it's the same tempo. It's it's a it's a huge music that can loop. Um, I. I created different me and and uh, the guys up on, on Leap Game Studios. We divided the music in in different segments. So you will see here on Cave Rune One that we have that we have Cave A One, B One, and C One. Got it. So these uh, inside uh, these Cave Rune One, I have a sequence continues that. It keeps playing A1, B1, C1, and B1 again. Got it. Um, and then here it's where the things got a little complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we have layers. Uh, let, let me let me oh, let, let me show this one. We have the percussion combat too. This one, it's an important layer. Yep. Why? Why? Because, because it's a layer that uh, we, we don't have a random step. It's a normal layer. And this layer will play always. You know, any time that this segment is triggered, Got it. The, the percussion combat will play always. Um, yeah. And, that, and, and, and you and, have those important are, layers across each of the, uh, each of the areas. Yes, yeah. So here, bass and drums, they are normal layers because they are playing. Yep. Uh, and drums drums are associated here. We have the states. Got it. We have the, the boss state, the combat state, and the downtime state. So drums are associated with combat. Uh, and uh, yeah, and bass and drums are important. So let, let, let's see these guitars combat one. Here I'm using a random step, um, and we have three uh, random steps with the with the the loop with the sound with with the, the layer and one without it. Yeah. So this is something that we talk about with with the Leap Studio, and uh, I want a chance to play that uh, guitar loop. So we are thinking about here, you know, it's it's seventy five percent. It's a chance that this will play because we have three layers and one that is muted. Yeah, yeah. Basically, don't have to have nothing inside. And uh, there are some other um, layers that work th like this way. So if we trigger combat one, we don't trigger combat two. Got it. Because they are some kind of variation. Yep. You know. Yeah. Well, and it's uh, an elegant solution to this this idea that you've got looping music. Uh, yeah. You have all these layers, but adding that percent chance that you won't hear a layer means that you bring more dynamism, bring more dynamics to the music. Yeah. 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 And one of, and, and one of the things they they are uh, saying uh, about the 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 game, you know, oh, you have four uh, procedurally generated worlds that make every playthrough unique. Yes. And now we got think we got, <laughs> we got this and we were thinking okay, how can we make every time that you play the game a music unique? Yes. So we got these different groups, so guitars combat 1, guitars combat 2, guitars combat 3. So if you play the game 3 times in the same level in the same room in the cave world you can listen to three different guitars yeah. um and yeah uh percussion downtime we have the same so we have some plucks we have some sound effects uh that that enter uh it's it, it's actually not sound effects but they are lay effects layers in the music so they yeah, are i remember Giovanni, it's just to add on that i remember there uh, being especially francisco being very specific about the transitioning uh yeah. moments right he really yeah. wanted to make this clear to the to the to, you, you to, mean you mean about the changing state yeah 
Yeah, uh, about the changing state, we we have. Uh, let let me just pick one here, and you will see, uh, Damon, that. Uh, let me pick uh, room 10 mm -hmm. and you see that we have a good example that we have uh, other worlds maybe yeah uh, I've, I've used some random steps yeah so here uh, on this on, on on the room 11 from the magic world we play s1 then t1 then u1 v1 w1 and then we have a, a random step uh, so perfect so together with with the layers yeah. uh, we divided these uh, segments to play randomly you know so each time that you will listen the 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 u u1 step from magic inside of it we would be different and the whole music will be different because can trigger three uh, different segments yeah 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 uh, a great um, a great way to bring more diversity to the soundtrack right and and you're blasting yeah. through these these levels and these environments and so keeping that fresh uh as you were saying uh is really mirrored in the music system that you helped bring to the game yeah yeah uh let me play here just to to, to listen to some music Yeah, this is one segment. So we have down, the downtime state uh, playing, and this is it, this is uh, uh, the time that yeah you are exploring, you know. Yep. And now if let me just and now if if we put it uh, downtime and play it and put it on combat. Yeah. And now okay, you kill it all the all the enemies. You return to downtime. Perfect. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And and the way that works within the system, you know, you have this level of uh, transitioning. It's very smooth between your different gameplay states. And then outside yeah. of this, um, in between um, in between levels, this is another level yeah. of transitioning. So to to again it's it's so great to to see you know your uh your technical orchestration of these moments right and of course all serviced by the work that antonio has done to prepare the stems and and get everything lined up for the system yeah, yeah. uh take a look at the, the river world uh, we have a we have some levels that are so huge yeah. talking about uh, sequences and, and and random steps because here we have a random step inside a sequence that have sequences yes so right <laughs> yeah so it's 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 you know you never get the music uh, uh you know equal each time yeah, you're it, 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 it won't be the same yeah yeah Never. So. And, and they were they were very they were very specific about that actually. Yeah. They really wanted to to create yeah. this experience to the player. And, and that's great. Yeah. And that's something that I think is sometimes lost in translation between uh, cinema and and games, right? Because I think the assumption from a player maybe who you know doesn't have uh, game audio knowledge is that you just press play, right? You just press play yeah, on the soundtrack in a game and it just happens, yeah. right? You turn on the faucet yeah. and out comes the music. But but it's, uh, as you're illustrating here, that it's, it's actually a hugely dynamic thing with the intention of, well, reducing listener fatigue, right? Because yeah. you want them to uh, have a different experience each time and you don't want it to be repetitive and um fatiguing um and because of that you know it's very clear that you, you you're not just pressing play uh it's a very different approach to music yeah and and, and and that's the thing like i think 
the it doesn't matter how great your music are or is and it, like you can be listening to the to the all the beethoven symphonies if you listen in loop the whole day you hate beethoven <laughs> so and that's not his fault is because no one can listen to the same stuff all the time yeah. so i i i i think that uh one of the reasons that i personally love you know uh when we work with dynamic music system it's because it, it enriches the experience so much and brings different experience uh from one particular music to the to the player that they're like just it, avoid is as you say the ear ear fatigue and and also I, I would say that one of the another good reasons to do this it's because in terms of size costs or or actually more specific in terms of production costs yeah. in terms of music you can expand you know your game experience just using one one music with different combinations instead of having different music for everything you know and that's very important and uh yeah so how how let's let's put that into numbers like you would get a a 5 minute composition from um from Jose okay. and then so with a million tracks and you would be able to take that 5 minute composition and maybe you know stem it out in such a way that you would have i don't know t- five, 10 variations, 20 variate, like infinite variations of that five minute composition that would be dynamically recombined by the game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that at least the experience with one music, if you have five minutes, I would say that you can listen to that track at least uh, uh, with variations in dynamic in dynamics yeah. applied, like, easily six between six eight maybe even more times without getting overwhelmed by which means like it doesn't get uh to cause ear fatigue to the to the player and it's just one music piece uh so that's that's very that's uh, i think one of the definitely one of the biggest advantages of, of having this and what giovanni did there uh all the other technical side my i think my work was the easy part giovanni <laughs> giovanni had the oh sorry it's okay you're doing great yeah, the right. the in in terms of numbers, if we uh, summarize this, we got the music uh, from Jose, and and as you said, five minutes, six minutes of a music, turn it out in twelve different levels of the whole world. So you have, you know, Tunchi. It's 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 not a a, a long game, but you can have. Uh, 20 30 40 hours of gameplay yeah and then uh, about uh, this if you see the river room here the river world with these 12 rooms uh i got the room room one playing i think five or six different segments and this is maybe one minute or one minute and a half of the whole music sure and then and then we keep adding different segments so run 2 okay we now you've got more segments got it and 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 this on on, on the the music side from Jose the music was something kind of uh, how can i say um going up in level of tension of course you know the music was uh, they the music begins some uh, more subtle light and then it, it going you know getting more more tense uh and then if if you if you think about room one in 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 river world it's the easiest level of that world yeah and room 12 it's the hard one <laughs> before yeah. the boss yeah so the music it's five uh, five minutes or six minutes uh, increasing tension and this is uh, here on the different segments in Wise that is increasing tension in the game. Nice, nice. And and we've got two levels of of dynamism, right? We have this uh, the way that you sequence things that allows for randomizing of the different segments, uh, and then we've got the gameplay, like the moment to moment gameplay that is doing. Uh, 
track-based uh, changes based on game state, as you've shown us before. So you've really got a couple different, I will say, vectors. You've got a couple different aspects of the dynamism. You've got the progression throughout the world, the, the kind of, um, yeah, what you're building into the randomization of your sequencing, and then you've got the the moment to moment gameplay. Like, how long is the player in combat before they come back to, um, you know, being at rest? And so, so you have, yeah, exponential ways that this soundtrack will be heard based on the player's progression, their moment to moment gameplay, and the shifting um, aspects of the yeah. music system. Yeah, here is some kind of, uh, if, if we can talk about uh, structural thing, yeah. uh, structural uh, uh, thinking. Uh, so we have two basic uh, uh, macro levels. There is uh, downtime in combat. Yeah. And, and okay, sub-levels of these macro levels. Uh, we have the world, different worlds. And the levels that got, you know, you, you were going through that world. And then inside of it, we, we got these kind of, you know, web uh, layers, different layers, different instruments, uh, random steps, uh, play or not, not to play, different segments inside each level. So it's, it's some kind of infinite <laughs> yeah. possibilities. Yeah. Great. So, and, and I love the story being told here today, you know, from this, this blue sky composition, uh, through the lens of music remixing, uh, and then, you know, in collaboration with the system and the game ultimately that, uh, you know, is represented through the music. Uh, it's such a, such a great progression. Yeah, and I, I, uh, one of the things that I like a lot about this, uh, it's it was such a learning process to as always it is for all of us, and I personally love the idea from their side to have a, a horizontal system for the boss, mm -hmm. so every every section of the muse could adjust or could play accordingly to every section of the boss. Yeah, because the boss had the, 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 a group of behaviors that would go to a next group of behaviors, etc. So the music would like change the block with that. I love this approach. It's a classic. I, I love that. Yeah, you know. And then for for the for for the the gaming ex, the like the not the boss moments like it was like a layering in world, system. Yep. Yeah, in the world, it was like a layering system. And I, and you know, um, I I really think that um, it's always important for whoever is watching this. Maybe it's their first game and they they don't know about. Uh, wise or they know a lot I, I always think it's important to be as creative uh in the music side as for the game design because i think that's the, one of the best marriage we have uh you know in, in the game is when the music and the game design are are talking so close and you have this very crafted experience not just from from the gameplay but from the from the music itself with which just in the end it just enhances the story just enhance the Game play experience when it's done uh, well and it, it works works together. Well, and your illustration really uh, underlines, you know, what are the strengths of interactive audio, right? Mm -hmm. Because let's be honest, you could have bounced a five minute loop and played it the entire time you're in the cave and just looped it. That's it. like this yeah. is this is a way, right? Yeah. Uh, however, I'm of the opinion, I think it's a shared one that, you know, to really leverage the strength of our medium, we need to yeah. dig down deep into the tools and the opportunities that we have, getting information from the game and sometimes even giving it back, as we saw in, um, in the community spotlight section, you know, that there these are the opportunities that make our our medium what it is, right? And what separates it from 
from just the linear playback of, of film. And it creates those moments where, where people who are sharing an experience, like they've, everyone's played Tunche, they're all sitting around talking together. I know you can play as different characters and you'll have that different experience. Oh, well, when I was playing as this character and I was in the cave and the music was like this and did you, oh wait, I played a different character and the music was like this, what? Yeah. And that, it are the, those are the stories and that's the power yes. and the strength of our medium. Yeah, and, and, and I, w one of the, uh, this is not corny or cheese, it's reality. One of the things that, uh, if, if you go to Andromeda website, you will see that we, we put right in the face, storytellers through sound. And, and that's what I truly believe that's our function here. It's just to, to tell a story, to tell a good story. In our case, we use the music in a video game yeah. to help the story. And it doesn't matter if it's sound design or music or voiceover. It's always about the about the story, and as you say, the, the when you have this opportunity to have different players playing the same game and having this different experience on the storytelling side, because the music contributed with that, yeah. so then our job is done. Well put, very well put. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Um, You're working okay. on uh, uh, working on the the two methods, like uh, you know, with the boss we work it horizontally, with the world we we work it vert vertically. Uh, it was a uh, it was a very important point of the process uh, of of learning, yeah. learning uh, using the, the the two thing different things, and as you mentioned, we we could. We, we could play the, the music in a five minute loop and okay, it's easy. It would be so much easier, but we as a player of the game, it wouldn't be so cool. Right. Right. If it was it uh, a five minute uh, mu music playing in loop. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. We as developers have, have to think about it. It's important. Let's talk about platform differences. I, yeah. That's kind of interesting. And I'm wondering if you had to make any changes, accommodations, did you have to trim down the number of layers that you used on certain platforms or were there different um, considerations? What do you think, Giovanni? Yeah, so basically... Um, um looking here now at the sound banks we have um sound banks for different platforms yeah uh, let, let me let me share the screen again Great. and uh i remember <laughs> was it a long time not so long time <laughs> ago but okay but life well, moves exactly pretty fast. one year yeah uh i remember that um We've done uh, different uh, sound banks for each music. So bosses, uh, they have their own sound bank, and and the world, they have a different sound banks. So here are the world. Uh, no, sorry, uh, cave. Are, are we seeing this? Yeah, screen? sure, sure. Oh, okay, cave, uh, jungle, magic, and river, and yeah, and as you can see. Uh, they are huge <laughs> in the decoded size, yeah. uh, but the data size it's 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 so much better. And yeah. um, one thing that I remember is that uh, for the Switch version, we cut uh, the you know the the quality yeah. of the music. So yeah. So you had to compress the yeah because the size I, I, on I disc resource more. was lower. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I compress it more for for switch. And yeah. But it sounds like you didn't so, have to do any kind of like, oh, I guess we're only gonna have one variation of the guitar randomizations for combat one. Like we're not mm. gonna be able to have combat two and three guitar variations on this platform and that platform. Yeah, uh, no, because uh, this was discussed between us, and they are, you know, they are they are. 
their preference was let's maintain the procedural aspect yeah in switch also got it got it you know so we needed that on every platform yep well and and this is part of that um you know creative and you know reality that's where those things <laughs> land right yeah. because because the, at that point you you say to the developer well okay and what it means is we're going to reduce the quality for for these sounds on this platform like if you still want yeah. them all if that's the goal well the decision is we will reduce the quality so that we can fit them all in on a lower spec platform uh, yeah they 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 had the the uh, dev kits they tested and uh, after some you know f back and forth yeah. we okay let's 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 do this way uh, but we maintain the 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 dynamic system for every platform so that's great is working great for every pla different platform i bet it still sounds great <laughs> uh, yeah because again yeah, yeah. as audio professionals i think we can probably catch the difference on occasion uh, and at the same time, uh, the the low quality is so much better than uh, the equivalent ten years ago. So low quality still yeah, sounded yeah. pretty good. I, I, and I wouldn't say that it was a low quality; ah, sure. it was a medium quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, great, great. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 not a huge difference between them. That's so. great. Yeah. Well, then you have all the tools to be able to profile that and understand, you know, how that how that can be best applied to a platform. So it's yeah. it's great to hear that it landed in a place where you think it sounds great. I, I'm sure it does. So cool. We were at the very, very, very limit. Yeah. In terms of capabilities, like yeah, that's the maximum we can go from here, guys. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's great. But it worked. It's great. Well, a fantastic project. Uh, so much heart and soul in it. So much passion. Uh, such a great representation of the game and the music uh, in harmony. Uh, thanks so much for sharing that today with us. Yeah, yeah no, was, that was... was uh so, sorry Charlie go on go on man go on no it was a, a, a huge challenge for us um the the dynamic music you know it's it's something that is essentially become a requirement now in every game uh and uh because because players they they become you know aware of looping soundtracks yeah and uh the demand for something that is is dynamic and it, it's non-linear it's it's not special today it, so it's, it's something that we need to do it yeah you know it, every game and every platform need different music each time you play the game so at the same time we know this today uh, and uh, it was still a uh, uh, learning process, you know, working at, at, of, with, with so many uh, different layers. Diff uh, in the first, in, in the first part that Jose sent the music, there were so many uh, different instruments. And now, okay, we need to to create groups. Okay, we need to create create groups of groups. And then we were adding these things inside Wise, and Wise helped us to achieve a, a really, really nice uh, result. Yeah. Yeah, the, you know, like uh, sometimes I, I, I get approached by uh, uh, composers and, and sometimes assume composers, sometimes guys from, from that plays on bands, you know, like especially during the pandemic, a lot of people because of the pandemic, they could not play uh, play live. So they were trying to find ways to, you know, pay the bills and, uh, uh, I, I have the school, the game audio school, and the, the the guys they were like texting us constantly, like, how can I work on video games? I I can I can I know how to do music, and and, and I was like, listen, 
if you want to work on video games, it's not just about knowing how to to m compose music. It's about knowing how to tell a good story, know how to create a, the, uh, interactive, a music system, or at least know the concept of it or understand a little bit of game design because I think it's so important to, to know a little bit of game design as well because you need to think like a game designer, thinking about the hooks, thinking about the opportunities that the game is, that, where the music can change according to what's happening in the gameplay or, or the storytelling or, or the story in the game to be more, more specific. So there is a, a, an extra level that you need to go to actually compose for, for video games. And I think it's it's very important to know how to tell your story through music for a video game using uh, interactive music system whatever is going to be even though it's like a simple 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 layering system or a simple simple horizontal uh resequency it, it's very important to know how to do that because it's crucial in, in the games right so yeah. yeah so and what i'm hearing you say is you know composing is the start like knowing how to make music this is the start but understanding the yeah. language of our medium of interactive audio like understanding yeah. even as a player from this side of the screen, like what's happening to the music in the games that we're playing? Like yeah. who who is behind the curtain with the orchestrating baton uh um, yeah. you know creating the the soundtrack, the unseen soundtrack, you know, the unseen orchestra behind the scenes that's working dynamically to support the game. Like this is something that as players I think well as players who, uh, you know how it is, you're 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 playing a game or watching a movie and you just can't help but like pick apart the system. You're like, oh, they did that. Uh, yes. Which I guess is... In, in, <laughs> yeah. It, no, no, and you, you're so right, man. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, absolutely. And it's like to make the players think, right? Yeah. Oh, wow, this is really following me. Like, I am a huge fan, yeah. huge fan of Olivier Delivier. Yeah. Because yeah. I know you guys know him. We talked to him many times. I'm a huge fan of his music. Yeah. Huge fan of him. Had the chance to talk to him, uh, I think, a couple of times here in nice. LA. Such a nice guy. And uh, and Olivier is on at this level where, where he composes the music and use wise as part of the composing process. Yeah, yeah. Not just like as the less, yeah. okay, I have these, now let me figure. No, he composes with Wise in mind. Like, yeah. okay, it, it's almost like Wise was his second doll. Of course, yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think this is so cool. And you can see like his music it really shines in terms of like interactivity on, on the on the video games. It's one of those guys that is like doing an amazing job in terms of interactivity. Yeah. For, for music, really cool stuff, really cool yeah. stuff. And the, compose, the, the composing itself, the, 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 the essence, the core essence of music is also amazing. So it's full package for him. Yes, and this is about understanding that intersection of, you know, interactivity and what the game has to offer to sound and how to leverage that. And then the composition of that within a tool like Wise, yes, it is it is both a second DAW and an extension of your digital audio workstation or, or an yeah. extension of your, um, you know, your score, your composition paper, yeah. right? It's, but it's yeah. the way that you're, the way that you put that all together from pen to paper, all the way to controller and screen. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It was, it was it is almost if you open your DAW and you open Wise, and you work one uh, each one in in one screen, and uh, you you can change tempo, pitch, and, and rhythm and volume, you know melodies and harmony and things uh, to use in Wise and Wise accept everything. Okay, now we can change that. I want I want to change the tempo. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 better to to think about the process. Yeah. Like like Antonio said in the beginning, we need the yeah. music. We need uh, you know ten ten tracks. We need uh, fifteen tracks, twenty five tracks for this game. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's start to think about uh, about the tracks and how 
they will play in the game yes. using Wise. Yes. There you go. Fantastic. Fantastic. We get right to the to the core of it and and I love it. The storytelling, the immersion in these in these worlds. Uh, your work today is incredible. A lot of folks in the chat giving you a shout out and a high five, really vibing with the work today. So thanks <laughs> to folks for tuning in. And, uh, and I'm just glad to have had this conversation today. Uh, thanks, Antonio and Giovanni. Uh, it's great to have you here. Awesome. Thanks for having us. And uh, if, you, if anyone wants to connect with us with social media, just bring it on. Cool. We'll, yeah, yeah. we'll drop some links into the description pages uh, for these videos after the live stream. Uh, they'll be available on demand afterward, and folks can circle back and uh, get some great tips uh, from it. Um, yeah, again, a pleasure, and uh, folks will find their way to you. And uh, thanks again for Amen. being on Wise Up On Air. Yeah. Yeah, th thank you very much for inviting us and, and, and to have this uh, chat and, and, and talk about the, the work we did at Tunchi. Uh, it, it is literally an honor for any audio professional uh, for games to be invited by people so important to the industry that you are, you know, a team responsible for, for WISE, which is such a, a widespread and 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 uh, you know important too in the community today, and I think that uh, our work uh, on Tunche using the middleware is 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 reinforcing uh, that it is it's incre you know it's 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 intrinsically accessible to any studio. Yeah. So, yeah. Once again, thank you very much for for the invitation and and uh, it was a a great chat. You're welcome. I agree. I agree. That was great. Great. Thank you so much, Damien. It's, again, pleasure. Pleasure to be here, man. Keep it up. That amazing work you guys are doing, actually shifting the way music and, and audio overall works in video games. It's like, you guys are... Kudos to you. Cheers to that. Great. Wise Up On Air. Uh, keep tuning in. We'll have more info on the 2022 beta coming up soon. So get your hands on that and let us know uh, how we're doing. And again... Thanks for tuning in to Wise Up On Air.